Dime Matt channel, welcome. Right, today I'm gonna to be taking this strip of metal and turning it into a type of collet that I've never seen before. Uh, it's a new, new idea I've got. I haven't done any designs, I've never made it before. Just taking it out of my head and manifesting it with my bare hands. I, I enjoy doing that kind of thing. People who see my videos before on this channel will, will know I like experimenting and learning and finding new, new things which I can share with you and then you can take it and put your own little design stamp on it. And then this whole movement of hand making jewelry grows and uh, doesn't remain stagnant or just die and turn into everything just becoming CAD made, <laughs> made by robots. Anyway, so <laughs> uh, get into it. After thank you to new patrons, we've got Erica, Linda Wade, and then last month I had Mrs. Raven. This month we've got Mr. Raven. Hold tight, the Raven crew. Yeah, you're Raven. <laughs> So I just want to make good progress with this video and the work I'm doing today. So uh, it's not a full instructional guide, but at the same time, if you do want to make it yourself, all the information will be here. Also, if you've got any questions, just drop a comment um, and I'll, I'll answer it. Uh, anyway, so I'm starting off with a strip of metal. It is just under a mil thick, just over a mil, uh, sorry, just over four mil deep and the length. Doesn't really matter. That's just obviously plenty long enough to turn up a small collet. So first we're going to do rainbow it. Half round pliers. Parallel pliers. The, the half round bit goes closest to you. Get them nice and secure on your bench peg. Parallel pliers go over there. Pivoting. Just giving it a tweak. So you got a little, little bit bent now. So do that a little bit, scoot it along. Do that a little bit, scoot it along. Do that a little bit, scoot it along. Bend it the same amount and move it along the same amount every time. And it never happens, but you should end up with a quite a decent even curve. Uh, and don't try and curve it really tight all in one go. Just do it, uh, obviously, a few times. And then before I get too far along, I start from the other side as well. It's just easier to get that end bent. This bit of metal is really hard, so I'm just going to kneel it. But ba basically, I go along it once and kneel it, go back along it and kneel it again. Keep it, keep it soft. Pay attention to how it feels. If it's starting to feel really hard, even if you don't expect it to, to harden up that quick, you just do what the metal tells you. So if it's hard, just kneel it. So anyway, that's soft now. So I'm working in silver. Cherry red is perfectly annealed enough for continuing to work on it. Uh, I'm going to go get that, get it nice and tight. People often ask me how much you meant to curve them. It doesn't really matter, but I always take it to about that. If you actually want to know what that curvature is, it's like the top of my ring stick, really. It's literally a Z plus three, four curvature. It doesn't really matter because the next move is to turn it up. We'll end up with a cone shape little cone and then we'll be banging it into a collet punch. So you're just basically giving it, giving yourself a bit of a head start before banging it into a collet punch. It doesn't work. We've got a parallel walled collet and then you try and force it and let me get it here and then you try and force it into there it's going to split open the solder joint and you do see it on youtube people doing it perhaps you can get away with it a thick bit of metal and you keep annealing it all the time but you're just creating work for yourself to enable you enable you to be able to get away with a bodge just do this first it doesn't take a long time have a look at the curvature. Choose a bit that's nicely even curved. If you're new to this, you might end up with sort of straight sections and then curves and the curves inconsistent. You want to sort of about that much where it's a nice consistent curve. So I'm using, I'm using this bit. It seems to be the best that I've got there. Yeah, it's not as good. Anyway, so get a flat end. It's going to work really fast on this one. Going for these, half flat, half round nose snipe. I always say work to a stone. I haven't got a stone here. I'm breaking my own rules. Should I get a stone out? Yeah, maybe get a stone out. Okay. You want it maximum size with a stone right on top of it. You want maximum size it hidden just under the girdle. I think I'm going to go a bit smaller than that this time. So I'd rather have this a bit lower down the stone rather than going right up to the girdle. It's just what the design I've got in mind, what, it, what would suit it better. Just close mine up for the first time. 
wonky little thing. That's what they like when you first do them. Uh, put my stone in. It is just under the girdle, so that's that's too big. You, you can, I could work with that. I could file down the top a little bit, but I want it. Uh, I want it slightly smaller. So I just do that by simply cutting a chunk out. Cut through it. Be careful the last bit. Because what happens is your blade can jump through and then you end up putting a saw blade nick on the other side of your collet. A way to protect yourself from that is hold it like that in parallel pliers. And then of course the blade can't physically cannot get to the other side of the collet so that protects it. Anyway, so that's opened up now. Close it up. I want the size I want with a nice tight join so I can solder it with a minimum amount of solder, make the solder easier for myself and the join will be strong and the joint will be invisible and it'll be a higher quality piece of jewellery. So I cut another bit out. That's my collet now. A little bit of wonky shape, but the join is nice and straight and nice and tight. That's not soldered up yet. But it's ready for soldering. Holding the collet in tweezers. Tweezers has been held up in front of me in the bench peg slot. Hard solder. Join is tight, so you can get away with using less solder. It will flood through the whole join much easier than if you're trying to fill up gaps and stuff. Join will be strong. Join will be invisible even after polishing. Bang in your collet punch. Just wanted to mention before this is fully banged in the collet punch before i was talking about when it was like that rainbow shape of metal and i was talking about using a nice even curvature like if you've got a straight bit and then a curve when you get to this stage and you turned it up you'll find that looking at it from the side one side will be like vertical and the other side will be more out um, and then you have to really force it into into a proper shape so it's better for you for progress and avoiding problems by making things correctly before we move on to the next stage. Top tip, yeah, once you've hammered it in. I learned this from a commenter on one of my videos in the past. Uh, I was talking about that can be really awkward to hold on to and file, and uh, you got, it's important to keep it parallel. Like I was doing it like that, which, which you can do. It's a little bit awkward and it slips out your fingers a lot. What the person said is just leave it in there. Leave it in your collet block. That holds it perfectly. You can't do anything but then file it perfectly vertical. But it, it's weird because it spins around as you file it. So now having a nice flat top, I can choose a measurement. I'm going to cut off the bottom half here because this what we just made doesn't need to be deep at all. 2.6, I think looks good. 2.6, and now as that top is flat and nice, I can use that as a as a guide for dividers. So I just set these to the little line I drew. The, the measurement's not important, it's just what I like the look of basically. So it just happens to be 2.6 from the top. But because that top is flat, I can now use it to get a nice line to follow when I cut it off. So it's a little bit deeper than what I said. I left it above my line to 2.75. We'll get it cleaned up now and then uh, we're going to start chopping this up. It's weird making these videos because you, person who clicked play on this video, already know what the finished result is. I don't at this moment. So um, I'm, I'm still figuring out how to do it. So uh, it's going to be zigzaggy around the outside. Uh, I'm going to mark eight points. Uh, four, four this side and then four slightly turned coming from the bottom. So uh, anyway, I'm just gonna do eight on the top and then use that as a guide to go down to the bottom. And I would do that just by eye. It's worth practicing doing this. It's a good test of your estimations of halfway points and stuff. Uh, a circle divided by four is quite easy, I think. I just put my saw blade over the middle and then I'm comparing one at top and bottom 
and uh, I get that by looking at either side of the saw blade. It's like two, it's a circle, yeah, with my blade down the middle. So I'm seeing two half semicircles. And if it's slightly to one side, then one, one shape looks smaller than the other. So you just adjust it until they're both exactly the same size. So that again, to do this accurately, you need to have done the step previously accurately, getting it perfectly round in one of these. If it's got a wobble to it, this ain't gonna work. And uh, I suppose I should suggest you, doesn't matter where the solder join is, yeah, maybe get the solder join on, get the solder join, it's gonna be zigzaggy around the bottom. The, get the solder join on the top zig. So find a solder join, there's mine, I'm looking down the inside, I can see the line. I'm just gonna put a, put a mark on the solder join. So first mark is on top of the solder join and then put my blade on top of that mark and then I'm adjusting it, holding it on that mark, no matter what, and adjusting it until I get my two semicircles exactly the same. So checking it on this stencil. These stencils are not very good for putting metal on and then marking it, but they are good for doing doing it like you normally do by eye and then checking it with the stencil. Let's see if I can show you this up close, because it's showing me where it's not good. Can you see that? Top and bottom's pretty good. The one on the right is slightly down, and then the one on the left is down quite a lot. So there's one upsetting it. So that's good, I'm gonna carefully hold that and I'll just put a little line just there. I'm gonna to have to move that across. So I've got top, bottom, left, right marks, and I'm gonna use those. This is easier, I think, going in between them. So the same again, but in between those marks. That second set of marks, I've scored down from the top, down to the bottom. Is that showing up? See those little lines? Just roughly scratched them. So my original starting point was the solder join. I put a little black dot on the inside edge just to help me find that at a quick glance. And what we're doing now, we've got four positions on top marked and four positions underneath marked. They're both sort of out of alignment with each other. Uh, we can use those now to sort of zigzag up and down around it. So starting with my solder join one, that's gonna be a top, remember. So I just went round it with my marker pen again, thickening up those lines carefully, trying to keep them accurate. It is difficult with a marker pen is going up and down the sides on this curvature. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, we're cutting this out now, leaving only really what we've colored in with a pen. Um, I'm gonna cut it, I'd recommend you do this too, cut it quite far away from your line and then we're gonna file it and paper disc it, rubber wheel it, whatever, up to perfectly accurate. But yeah, I'm gonna start off uh, just by cutting it basically <laughs> what needs to be cut in a way, basically what needs to be removed, and then achieving that accuracy with the files. It's the next day. I like to start my day with a fresh saw blade. Not really, I just needed one. Anyway, right, so I'm just gonna start hacking, hacking this up. Working on collets. You've got sharp edges, always really painful to hold on to. You can help yourself out by having a fresh sharp blade and then it does more cutting rather than having to squeeze it really hard while you battle on with a blunt blade. So just to show you how rough I'm working, just hacking it out, look, keeping it well away from the line, doing that on all four sections around the top it's gonna look a bit rough and ready, but uh, there's plenty of metal there basically to file back and get it correct. Uh, if you're actually doing this, or you're about to start doing this, really painful to hold on to, and the pain will increase as you turn it into a sharp, jagged, zigzaggy piece. <laughs> so get ready to do some conditioning on your, on your fingertips. Okay, so they're all cut out now. Um, just thinking sort of a few steps ahead, 
the claws are going over the top of these, yeah, so I'm not too concerned with those going to a really sharp point, but it's probably better just design-wise that the bottom ones do. They'll be joined to an under bezel. Uh, so I'm going to file those back. I'm going to get the tops correct and then use that as a guide to do the bottoms nicely. So I'm going to file them up, but leaving a bit of a flat on top, not going to completely go sharp. Uh, and then uh, and then hopefully they're all neat and symmetrical and all, everything's all parallel and stuff. And then we'll just use dividers and sort of draw out what we need to cut out from the bottom. Uh, what weapon shall I choose? I shall choose safety back barrette file. And if you're thinking to yourself, that's not a weapon, that's a needle file. All right then. <laughs> Deadly. Uh, I'm just going to file around it, get the tops similar, if not the same. So I'm just filing around each one, making adjustments, using using my marks as a guide. Being careful with my angles as well, because you could put a flat on like that, going straight across two at the same time. I'm I'm working to what I cut out with the saw blade. It's a bit more of a, a fancy angle rather than it being all straight. Anyway, you'll know what I mean if you try it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just doing a lot of work. And then you'll notice all artists do this. You sort of you're working on something like a painter will be painting closely, paying attention to what needs to be done to get the best result. The sculptor will be sculpting, same thing. Occasionally you have to stop and take a step back and you just change your mind. You change your sort of way of looking at it and just, just look at what you did without judging it and trying to find out then what needs to be done. It's like sort of, what's it called, macro, macro vision. You need to... Uh, you need to have a look at what you did rather than concentrating what what you're doing sometimes so making jewelry is the same i'll start saying all that because i'm just working to these lines and then i've got to stop and then just look at it and see see how it's proceeding okay so it's become a it's becoming a quite a nice looking little thing you can see on the top the flats so there's like little lines don't know if i've shown up those those are my original guide marks and if you look around the side you can see i'm above the black line. I've mentioned this before on the channel, but just in case you missed it, uh, divider lines, yeah, they, they're kind of invisible when you're going along or close to the same direction as like buff marks. So I purposely get quite a smooth buff stick and I'll just, I'll just roughly buff up and down just the opposite direction to how I'm gonna be using my dividers. And that way you can use these really gently and then see easily the line you're putting on there. If you're battling against, like if my buff marks were going that way, you've got to push a lot harder, uh, and, which means you're really scoring into the metal. Also means you're more likely to slip as well. So I think it's a benefit to buff it first. I'm expecting this to be more difficult than doing the top. because it's more, you've got to be more accurate and it's harder to hold on to, sort of less space. It's just cutting out a smaller shape on a more awkward thing to hold, so difficulty raises up a little bit doing the bottom. Ah, I did it again, I was just doing loads of work and the camera wasn't recording. So basically what I'm doing is cutting it out to like this stage, so they're not fully coming out because it's awkward to hold on to and quite painful as well. And I'm a bit concerned about it becoming weak and just being pushed out of shape. Uh, so just doing a bit of this work first, going around the outside, and then I'm gonna thread the saw blade through the middle and then zip, 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 and just chop these shapes out. Come on, start cutting. Really painful and awkward. It's taking shape, but here we go. Don't make me look bad on camera. <sighs> it's important I show you the the struggles, the awkward bits, because uh, 
otherwise you end up with a false impression that I made it really easily and everything worked really nicely. It's like, no, it's, <laughs> it's awkward and difficult sometimes. So anyway, let me uh, show you this up close. So that's been filed and adjusted. The top, the, bot, the back is what I just cut out. This is gonna need a load of work now. All scratchy and horrible, but the basic shape is there. I'm liking how far, I'm liking how this is proceeding. This collet really seems to show off the stone to its full potential. Okay, pulled down some square wire. We have got one mil, 1.1 mil square. I chose that thickness because it just looks good on the side of the metal work we just cut out. It's a little bit wider, just a touch wider than what I've cut out and Look, picking up, picking up my stone and then just putting the end of it, just looking like that. I just think it looks decent for a claw width to go over the top of that stone. It's quite a big stone. So what I'm planning on doing is just tapering these off to, to a point at the bottom half and then setting them into that. So I'm not working top level accurate today, but I do want four claws the same. So let's get a... Let's get a measurement. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, so the same measurement that I want above the stone is the same measurement uh, I want tapering. So now just sharpen that off to a point. I'll do the sides and then maybe I'll leave that until it's on the collet that way. I said it's not top level accuracy yet. If I was going top level, I would get dividers and draw a line down the middle, make sure it's all really perfect. We're working carefully with needle files or something. I'm just, just hacking into this. So I'm kind of going through the process of doing something a bit experimental. So I'm just, just doing, learning by doing. See that? Doing that four times basically. So that's gonna sit in there like that. So that's four claws cut out, ready to go. Keeping going with my theme of not thinking too much and not working to my top level. Uh, if I was working to my top level, I'd carefully hold that in position and scratch little lines either, either side of it and then carefully cut out an exact little gap for that to slot into. Today, I'm gonna, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put, a, I might just cylinder phrase it. Or, Maybe a saw cut first, then a cylinder phrase, and then just maybe uh, that might be enough. Perhaps put a needle file in it just to sharpen and straighten the edges a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's a slightly tapering to the top slot. Saw cut. Cylinder bar. digging it out a little bit because I've got to set my claw in quite quite deep okay get in there a bit more of this and then I'll, I'll have one done what I'm thinking because I'm taking quite a bit of metal out I'm worried if I just went around all four that would be a really really weak thing so I might do one and actually solder the claw in then move on to the next one and that keeps it strong then as you can see that slot I cut out there just open it up with a saw blade and then really squared it off just with a normal needle file. It's not a knife edge one, it's not like a sword file, uh, but it just goes to a point. Um, anyway, that was what sort of squared it off nicely, it enabled me to get the claw sitting in there nice and flush. Solder it in there, just gently squeezing it with uh, tweezers. Be careful. 
be a shame if you did all this work and then melted it. <laughs> totally possible. <laughs> it is nice working in platinum because it's really unlikely you make a mistake and melt it because it melts at such a high temperature. Especially if you're using like easy or medium solder. The solder will melt way before the metal melts. It's not the case with silver. It's all a bit it's all a bit close. So fast. That was medium solder, like barely touching it with the flame and it melts. Look at all this shit on my bench. I really hate being all messy and cluttered. It's really bad in here today. Anyway, um, there you go, look at that. Looks pretty, looks pretty neat. I'm doing a terrible job of showing you this. Hang on, let me, it's too difficult with that. All four claws are on, so have a quick look at my dodgy craftsmanship skills. A bit rough and ready. Normally I would work a bit neater than this. Uh, I'm looking at blobs of <laughs> solder, uh, and, and it was a bit gappy as well. I did put two bits of solder on twice because there was a bit of a gap needed filling up. I don't like working like that. But, uh, like I said before, I'm just hacking into this bit of metal basically to create this, to get this idea out in the real world. But yeah, that's how it is. That's how it's soldered together. Um, it's not that bad. Like, just a little bit of cleaning up and I can make that look really nice, I think. But yeah, there you go. So, next I want to... See, these are just the same as the bits of wire. I only sharpened them that way. I want them... I want to reduce them going that way down as well. So I simply just file it a little bit, paper disc even. Uh, just get that going. And then I didn't put the stone in yet. I was planning to for it to touch the girdle and then bend the claws into it. Oh, it is, it is up on the claws a little bit, hang on. I thought the claws were gonna just touch it. Yeah, it is lifting the stone up a little bit. Anyway, um, yeah, I wanted, it, I wanted it sort of just the stone sitting down and then the claws to bend straight up. So go like that, I like that look. And I think it suits when you've got square section uh, tapered claws. I think it suits it when you've got that curve on there rather than just being straight up the sides and then hooked over the top. So I just realised it's getting a bit dark outside and uh, yeah, it's the end of the day. I've got to go down, go down and sort my kids out. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to, I'm going to leave it at this stage for now. Uh, just looking at it, just having a, like I said earlier about painters, you've got to step back occasionally and look at what you've done. Uh, doing that now. Yeah, I really like it. I like how that V goes down and it really shows off the stone. It's quite an effective collet, actually. It's not just sort of designer. <laughs> it's like actually doing its job really well for basically showing off a stone. Holding a stone securely and showing it off. So yeah, I like it. So working around it, seeing my blobby solder joins and where it added more solder than what would be normal if I made a, a nice accurate slot. So I'm leaving it like this This now. Not my best work, but it is a prototype. Like I've sort of brought it together. You see that claw sticking out that way. I, I wouldn't have made it this roughly if I was really going for it. See those claws don't line last that one sticking out. Anyway, so yeah, there's issues with it, but I just wanted to go through the motions of creating it, getting this idea out of my head. And it does work. Like as a collet, obviously that's gonna sit on a, if that's completed the next stage, it'll sit on a under bezel. But it does its job quite well. It's, uh, considering it's basically just like a, a collet for holding a stone. <laughs> I really can't do this looking through the camera screen. There we go, I'm gonna chuck that in there. Um, but yeah, it does its job really well because it holds it securely, like the stone is sat on four positions all the way around. So that stone's nice and secure, uh, holding it horizontal nicely. And then looking at it from the side, it just lets in loads of light around the stone. So it, 
it's holding it securely, nice and strong, and it shows off the stone to the maximum, so I'm really, really liking this. There's a bit of a burr there, but anyway, anyway it's fresh from paper and filing and stuff, so it's a bit sharp and jagged around the edges, but... There you go. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I'm just thinking, if it was an under-bezel, it's looking like a square under-bezel would work, rather than a round one. That might be interesting. Anyway, it's uh, it's cool, right? I like it. I'm quite happy with that.